Caffeine, just caffeine. Just caffeine is all we need. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Rob Brown here, host of the Accounting Leaders Podcast. And we are at number 24 in our series of virtual roundtables with the leaders of leaders, the uh, primary people in global accounting networks, associations, and their ilk. We are in crazy times right here where we are still in the middle of lockdown. And I have three very high quality guests with us today. I'm going to get them to introduce themselves in a moment. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the situation as it affects accounting firms, professional firms with what is going on. So Rich, can I start with you? Welcome and uh, please give us a little introduction. Sure. Thanks, Rob. Uh, My name is Rich Howard. I am the chairman of the board of Creston International. Uh, Creston is a global network of Uh, accounting and professional services firms. Uh, We have about 200 member firms operating in about 110 countries and uh, are about 23,000 people strong around the globe. Uh, We are a member of the Forum of Firms. We are focused on clients who operate globally, of course, uh, in all sectors, and uh, clients that appreciate a high quality service, regardless of what it is we're doing for them, Uh, where the relationship matters. And uh, we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. Uh, So we're looking forward to that. We started in 1971. Uh, Personally, I uh, have been in the public accounting profession for uh, almost 32 years, uh, starting my career with uh, a firm called Arthur Anderson a number of years ago. I left in 2002 as an audit partner and joined CBiz and Mayor Hoffman McCann here in the United States, and I'm still with that firm. Uh, over the last 18 years, I've held a number of different roles, uh, including a member of the audit firm's board, executive committee, professional standards group. I was the regional test practice leader for a while and the director of quality control for the firm for a number of years. And today I function as an engagement quality reviewer for a number of our uh, public entities uh, and SEC reporting clients. So I work with securities transactions, uh, M&A transactions, IPOs, and so forth. You said that before, Rich, haven't you? That came very much off the tongue there. Welcome. Uh, Mark, official welcome to you in your new role, uh, the lineal. Uh, You've got a rich history. Please give us a little introduction and, and a bit of your journey. Thank you, Rob, and uh, good day to everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Cozio. I am now CEO, President and CEO of Lineal Global as of August 1. Uh, from there, I came from the American Institute of CPAs last 14 years, helping firms. I was an executive vice president there. Firm services, some advocacy, some international over time. Um, Before that, had practiced in a couple of different firms in Buffalo, New York. Uh, For those in the U.S., uh, Buffalo has been a struggling economy. So I said I had the pleasure of practicing in a recessionary economy my entire career. Uh, So as you're going to talk about some of these things as we get into a recession and all that good stuff, uh, (laughs) you know, that's been my entire experience in practice. Lineal Global is the second largest firm association in the world. Uh, it, is, it has history uh, going back to the days of ARAF uh, years ago, uh, then split from PKF International uh, a few years ago, and very quickly has grown from there, uh, being the second largest association, 236 firms, 4.2 billion in revenues represented and very quickly growing. Uh, And I'm learning, I have a lot of firms there that I already know, uh, not only in the US, but in other markets, thanks to my days sitting on the IFAC uh, Small and Medium Practices Committee. So look forward to the conversation and look forward to representing Alinea. Well, it's great to have you with us. And uh, Mark, Terry Snyder's been on these panels a couple of times. That's some big shoes to fill right there. He's quite a character. Good. Uh, Mark, did, sorry, did I cut out then? Did you hear what I said? I missed it. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was just saying that uh, Terry Snyder has been on the show uh, a couple of times and uh, he's some big shoes to fill. He's quite a personality. Yes, he is. Yeah. (laughs) Personality is a good term. That is a good term. Uh, Thierry, welcome. And uh, please give us a little introduction and a little of your journey. Okay. 
Um, well, I'm in charge of Prime Global uh, for EMEA, um, and I might be a little bit of an alien here in, in this group, <laughs> um, not just because I have this uh, Belgian French accent, but because I, I actually started my career um, in the recruitment business. I led a company for 15 years in executive search. And because we were at the time a Belgian company, which means a, a small company, uh, I started a network of um, international consultants. And that's how I got into the international business. So I have been the chairman of this uh, network during 10 years on top of uh, leading my own company. And that's how I have uh, eventually been approached by another accounting association, which is uh, MGI, who offered me to be uh, the CEO, which I did for four years. Um, and I thought it was very exciting. But so my background is not really finance. And when after four years, I have been approached by Prime Global, um, I guess it was just after the merger of three previous associations. And at EMEA level, we needed to put some, some glue between our different entities. So my role at the time became mainly to, to put that glue between the people having sometimes the three different mindsets and uh, to make it work. So my, my background in, in that sense is probably more about uh, soft skills, HR, marketing, selling skills, um, that type of things. And Pram Global today is, is going quite well. We have uh, 820 offices, 23,000 people, 3.3 billion um, firm revenues, and, and growing quite fast the last few years. So I guess our, our model is working quite well. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you all with us. These sometimes turn into a competition of who's got the biggest, but uh, uh, we really don't want it to be like that. You are all serving the professional world in one way or another. And uh, I, it may come up as a question down the line about why it's important for accountants to be part of something bigger than themselves in these crazy times. But let us start with asking what lessons we've learned. And Mark, I'm going to start with you because you mentioned the dreaded R word recession. And uh, we've been through some dark times with the economic crash 2008-9, I know it hit you guys hard as much as it did us in the UK. So what have you personally or professionally learned or what's changed for you over the last few months? You know, I think uh, as we look at it, 08-09 uh, was uh, definitely a recessionary time for many of the US firm clients. Uh, it was a minor blip for firms at that point in time, what it has shown me uh, over all of these years is that accountancy is relatively recession proof. Okay. Uh, we may lose some clients uh, in the next uh, year uh, based on just pure survival. Uh, it also tells me the importance of advisory services. You know, when I look at Rich and his pretty CBiz uh, logo behind him <laughs> and how strong that, that firm is in the US in providing advisory. And so, yeah, you may tighten up a little bit in audit, you may tighten up a little bit in tax. Uh, you know, the organizations may not make as many changes, but if we're in the advisory space, uh, I think that that's really what has helped to drive the firms. And today we're seeing that in the US, we're having a lot of conversations with our global member firms. So there's been a lot of governmental relief programs that have taken place uh, in a, a number of markets and those governmental relief programs, the first thing a client has done typically is to call their, their accounting firm and say, hey, I need help with this. What should I do? There's multiple programs and that's all part of the advisory. So the, the stronger we are as, an, as a profession in being all things to the client, the better off we are. And then, you know, obviously the strengths of the associations and networks to be able to plug from that. But, you know, I, will firms suffer a minor setback? Probably. But in the end, we will be bigger, stronger, faster out of all of this. And we're already seeing that from a technology standpoint. Sure. And what about you personally, Mark? Are there a couple more gray hairs on the head? Because in these times, you're not just a leader, you are a therapist, a counselor, 
you are a psychiatrist 24 7 these are crazy times for you as leaders as well what have you learned personally it's the beauty of the profession and that's <laughs> what i enjoy about it um you know if i were in practice and we had you know be it i started august one with a lineal i haven't had as many of those questions i am touching base with every firm within the association over the next number of months. Uh, but what I'm finding, especially now, so in my AICPA role uh, and what I went through from March until July 31 were the firms being incredibly uh, pressured by their clients for help. Uh, I shouldn't say pressured because it should be a, a, an honor to do so, but it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work on top of uh, already taxing tax season. Uh, and then you had the government that was twisting everything around as far as due dates and uh, programs and changing programs. So it was, you know, I said the team, my old team at ASCPA, 15, 18 hour days, I gave my notice two and a half months out saying by August 1, all of this stuff at AICPA and PPP and Congress will be over. <laughs> and I'll let Rich answer whether or not that has taken place <laughs> because I feel like it still left my team in a lurch a little bit, but they have it well under control. They didn't sure. anymore. We call that a hospital pass here in the UK. So you, <laughs> you filled in the ball and immediately 10 people dive on them. So Rich, let's come to you on that. You are very on brand and on point. Mark talked about the switch to advisor, which, back a few months ago was very much accounting firm driven. The accountant was pushing advisory onto clients that didn't necessarily understand it or want it. But now clients are crying out for advice and support and help. So we know that's changed. But what have been the lessons learned for you professionally and personally over all of this? Yes, uh, Rob, I think I uh, echo a number of things that Mark mentioned. Uh, I, I still remember growing up as a child. Uh, my father was a banker. And he told me as I was getting uh, advice on what to do with my life, that uh, there are two certainties in life, death and taxes. And so one of, the thing, one of the things that you could do if you wanted to make sure that you always had a job was to begin an accountant. Uh, so hence I became an accountant. Um, but in any case, I do think that accounting is, uh, is relatively recession proof. Um, you know, I think that what I've learned over my career is that uh, you are constantly having to reinvent yourself so that you can continue to provide value to those that you serve. And I think that's especially true in times that are uncertain uh, because nobody knows where you're going or how to get there or what the answers are because there aren't any. And so you really need to be able to step back and think about, you know, what would I need if I was in the same position as my client and reinvent yourself. Uh, and what you do. And earlier this year, when the pandemic hit, uh, there were questions about what was going to happen to my tax return. Do I have to file on time? Are the same rules still applying? Uh, and nobody knew the answers. And people were concerned about whether they were going to stay in business or whether they had to uh, let people go or uh, furlough employees or that type of thing. And I think the ones that, um, you know, were the most successful so far. Uh, have been the ones that have been able to pivot. Uh, that's a word that's been used quite often uh, over here these late mm -hmm. days, uh, is basically to reinvent, I'll call it, uh, what they've done for their clients and to step back and focus on the things that are of highest priority. And initially it was making sure that they were managing cash flows and uh, sticking to budgets and not spending unnecessarily. And trying to find ways to keep their employees engaged and learning to work remotely uh, because many of them hadn't. Um, and so it was a big transition in a number of cases. And where we spent our time was we shifted from being the compliance uh, assistants, you know, to ensuring that their financial statements were audited, their tax returns were prepared and so forth, because those things weren't top of mind, top priority. And we shifted to focusing on the things they did need, which was financial assistance and uh, the paycheck protection um, program loans and uh, economic assistance that was coming from various federal and state agencies and so forth. And that, I think, really helps you uh, improve the relationship you have with your clients when you help them through very difficult times. Uh, when you come out on the other side, your relationship is stronger. And let's face it, we're in a relationship business. Hmm. 
Um, and our success depends on that. And so when the compliance dates came back, obviously the, uh, uh, the tax deadlines were extended three months. Well, then the, uh, the, the busy season, so to speak, for that type of the business uh, just simply picked back up at a different point during the year. And so there was some temporary shift of when we saw you know, the, the bulk of that work happening. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really been one of the things that we've had to focus on in order to maintain our momentum. Uh, and we've been uh, very fortunate in that we've not had to take drastic steps or measures. You know, we've been able to retain our employees and keep busy. Uh, in fact, I feel like I'm busier in the last 10 months than I've been any other time of my career. <laughs> Uh, in many ways. Yeah, we're going to talk about the future of the networks and the associations in a moment. But Thierry, what we're finding is that accounting firms, accountants generally are not known for being agile. But in but, these tough times, we found that firms and even networks have been able to make decisions quite quickly. What lessons have you learned throughout all of this? Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I, I, I fully agree with what has been said until now. But what, what was really very impressive to me was to see how uh, agile were those firms to um, change radically the situation. And overnight, many of our firms have been able to switch to a totally different model. And that was very impressive. Um, it's like if human beings in front of big change are able to embrace that change in an exciting way and to, to make it a success. And, and you know, um, I'm leading firms in, in Africa, for instance, and I was wondering how the situation would be there. And um, a couple of our firms um, have been also under pressure because, as you know, the, the IT tools and internet in some places has been quite challenged. Um, so I guess in the US, in Western Europe, we were doing okay, but in some other countries, it was very challenging to keep the right level of connections. And we have a couple of firms who went basically in five-star hotels and they said, look, you cannot have any clients right now. We need your internet level because they had been able to negotiate uh, high quality internet connections. And they were putting their employees in bedrooms at very small rates and um, they were able to operate overnight anyway by doing that. So what I mean is that the more disruptive you have to face a situation um, that is disruptive, the more you become creative and, and nobody would have thought that um, so many firms would have switch just like this overnight from one situation to another. Yeah. And I find that quite, quite exciting to see this, this capacity the people have, uh, including accounting firms, because you would think accounting firms are pretty conservative and may not be the most creative people. But actually, I believe in association like, like us, very quickly when you organize virtual events, people exchange ideas and, and they are able to benefit from the best out of, out of everybody. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, um, I realized also, maybe it's, it's, it's in my personality, but um, the more you face something that was unpredictable, the more I find it exciting. Mm. Um, it makes our life different. Um, and you have to think out of the box, uh, which I find really exciting as well. Sure. So that's what I would we, say. We must be careful not to use the words creative and accountants in the same sentence because it, <laughs> it has different meanings. But you're right. What you're saying is that uh, accountants have been shown to be more entrepreneurial, perhaps, in their thinking and the way they've coped. They are. What's going they are. On. Anything to add on that, gentlemen, particularly around what's kept you going and what's kept you strong? Because there's been a lot of pressure on you as a leader of leaders. So in that cauldron, if you like, of pressure, how have you kept yourself going throughout this? I think the, you know, to Thierry's point on the creativity, uh, Rich had mentioned it also, you know, what we were seeing were firms that had already started down that path. Maybe they weren't in completely virtual, uh, getting, to, you know, getting to that point, being able to shift quickly. Uh, Rich, I can pick on the tax folks for, for a while because I had a firm CEO tell me, you know, 
you said my uh, my tax lead has said for four years there is absolutely no way the tax team can work remotely that everybody had to be in the office and yet in 48 hours they figured it out <laughs> that's right yeah needs must that's so true so uh let's talk about you and your roles in the future of networks Thierry, you let's come to you first on this one you talked about the what brought prime global to where it is today there's been some m a activity within accounting firms but what about the networks and associations themselves how has covid changed the way you're doing and what does the future hold for the professional membership space in accounting for you yeah well i, I believe there are different things um and and one of the thing is uh that to me what was uh, quite interesting was that um I have never been recruiting so many new firms than during the lockdown period. Okay. It was again quite challenging because um, I'm used to go on site um, because you need this personal contact with the people. And so we had to work in a different way. But to me, it was very impressive to see that this challenging times for everybody was also a way for many firms to think that if they don't belong to an association or a network, they're going to face bigger difficulties. And we have been recruiting, um, yeah, actually 14 firms just in, in the few months of the lockdown, which is much more than what, what we normally do. Um, and this is just for my region. Um, so that's, um, that's pretty interesting to see that um, people need the support and you know speaking about uh, events and things like that um, of course virtual events are working and offering uh, virtual events is important and will remain I believe important even if for um, if our firms are really keen to go back to physical meetings again um, because they are missing that part but I think we will have some sort of combined approach in the future the new normal will never be back to the old normal and and so the balance between virtual events and and um, physical events will always be there because people need to exchange ideas uh, to feel the support of some other firms whenever they face uh, difficulties. And we have seen that it, it can be done in different ways, not only with physical meetings. Yeah. So I also guess that uh, people will travel less, um, whether it's for clients meetings or for meetings in our associations. I would expect the people to, to travel less. Um, and I would also expect that maybe smaller association may tend to, well, they might struggle a little bit more than in the past, and they may decide to uh, get closer to other association. Um, they are not small, but when you see what, what's happening now with Baker, Tilly and, and, and Square Milner, uh, it's, it's interesting to see that during this period, um, some people are merging or getting closer, and I think that will be um, potentially a trend uh, yeah. for the next few months. Thank you. Uh, Rich, is there a consolidation coming up for the networks and associations? We, we hear from Thierry that there's probably never been a better time for an accounting firm to be part of something bigger than themselves. So the future is rosy, but uh, what do you see coming up for the space right now? I think Thierry is uh, right. I think there's, uh, this is really the best time for people to rethink their business models and what worked before and what uh, will work in the future. And I think because they are uh, faced with such uncertainty, um, it really allows them the opportunity to you know, think differently than they might otherwise have in a different time. So uh, I think the circumstances are such that we are going to see changes in terms of what people expect out of their organizations. Um, whether it's a network or an association. And I think we need to think differently about what we do as organizations. So, uh, you know, do we only provide accounting services or should we be thinking about other ways to interact with other organizations? Uh, you know, this idea that not everyone can do everything for everybody uh, is important because you need to partner and uh, create other connections. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, not being confined to a certain way of uh, uh, of operating 
uh, and keeping all options open with respect to relationships uh, is one of the things that will drive what we turn into as we evolve over the next uh, you know, several months and years. Mm. I do think that um, people crave connectivity and, uh, and interaction. And it's, although it's uh, effective, as Thierry said, in terms of having meetings that are virtual in nature and Zoom calls, I feel like I'm having Zoom calls every single time I pick <laughs> up the phone. I'm not using my phone anymore. I'm always on video. And so uh, it's certainly a much different uh, uh, circumstance, but um, you know it's not a uh, it, it's not a personal one. Uh, you're still you still have that barrier of the technology in between you. And I think that people like to be social and they like to get together and they like to build relationships. And that requires in-person meetings. So I think Thierry's right. There will be a balance uh, as we look forward. Uh, to what works and what doesn't. Uh, and I think that there could be some consolidation within the group uh, in terms of how do you best go to market with all of the things that would make uh, an association or a network successful. And I think our members are going to expect different things out of us and different value proposition. And we need to come up with ways in which to deliver that. Yeah, that's a really good point. The quest for relevance in a changing world and Mark, you've probably stood for office on a ticket of revenue and growth for Lineal that is already huge in this space. So uh, you've got some big plans, I'm sure, for what you're going to do in the next few months. And I, I'd like to thank Thierry for reminding me that Squire Milner is going to Baker Tilly since that was an Lineal Global firm. <laughs> it fell to number one. Uh, which is fine. Yeah, if he was an outsider before, he's even more of an outsider now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all good, though. You know, I have a number of firms that uh, are ready to replace them very quickly. So, uh, in, in, but in that vein, uh, there is going to be more consolidation in the profession that does affect us each and every time that happens. Uh, and a lot of the, I mean, the big two reasons for the firms is really succession and technology, being able to keep up or lack thereof of technology. I do think that the networks and associations must play, must play a much bigger role in that and helping their firms with curation of technology and making sure that they have the, the most advanced technologies at their fingertips. And that's one of the things that we're working on. But also to Thierry and, and Rich's point about this kind of, I think, hybrid approach. Uh, it's funny that Thierry says how well the video uh, atmosphere, the virtual experience is working, but yet Europe is probably one of our loudest members in that we can't wait to get back to live events, right? And so we're seeing that in some of the other markets. And we all, I think, feel that. We're all kind of feeling, you know, cabin fever in a little, in a way. But I think this, this blend that both Thierry and Rich talked about is what's actually going to make the associations and networks even stronger. We've all battled with trying to get deeper into the firms. There are some firms that it's only the CEO relationship with the association or network, or it's just certain leaders. It's not deeper in the firms. And in a very short period of time, we have found access to more people inside of uh, the, the, inside the firms. They are bringing more people to the table automatically because they don't have to put them on a plane. Mm -hmm. So some semblance of a virtual plus live event so that we can get deeper. I think that is forcing our transformation in a way too. So that's exciting. And I think that's going to help all of us from the standpoint of member retention, uh, because it's always been a risk uh, outside of, you know, a firm merging outright and leaving uh, because they no longer exist. I'd much rather focus on that, that retention piece and make sure that we're getting deep inside the firms. Sure. And uh, you brought up the subject of engagement and succession as well. And uh, we are getting reports, I'm sure it's the same for you, with the hybrid and virtual stuff that you're doing, that you can reach further down into a firm. It's not just the managing partners or senior partners that will attend. You can get people way down, which is great for succession in the firm and promoting future leaders. And they will come to your events from all levels. So that's got to be good for people in your space. For sure. Absolutely. And that's what, that's what we're seeing more of. So if we can help with the, you know, succession technology, big two reasons why firms are merging up in a lot of spaces that if we can fix those two issues or mm -hmm. at least 
contribute to reducing the risk of that, I think that that is going to be greater success for the associations and networks. Yeah, thank you. Anything to add there, gentlemen? Uh, I would just add that, uh, you know, the uh, ability to penetrate an organization also helps with its brand identity. And so to ensure that uh, more people within an organization feel part of the network or association uh, is critical to its success as well, because it will build relationships that don't otherwise exist. Hmm. And you can develop new business opportunities uh, from those contacts and those relationships. Uh, as Mark said, um, you know, you got limited engagement when you have an in-person event and everybody has to get on a plane to fly somewhere. It's a very high cost. And so firms don't send that many people and therefore the, their, you know, uh, organizations don't necessarily know each other as well either, not just uh, the network itself or the association. So the ability to get them on a virtual call and connect them, you know, through some other mechanism or some other tool that engages them in what the network or association is doing on a global scale, not only gives them an experience they would not otherwise uh, have, it also provides them contacts and people and relationships that they would otherwise never experience as well. Yeah. That's very good. And you do wonder what kind of shape would be in if this pandemic would have happened in 1990 with no internet and no Wi-Fi. <laughs> We'd be on fax machines and everything. So uh, yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, let, let's talk about the accountants themselves. Uh, Thierry, we know that there's a recession coming up. It's going to be global. Uh, people have, have taken out loans and they're going to be repayable. People have deferred taxes. They're going to become payable. So what are the challenges and opportunities facing the accounting firms themselves over the next few years? Um, my feeling is that, okay, the, the trend was already there, um, but, and, and we mentioned advisory and consultancy work, but yeah. the, the feeling I have is that if some of our firms and some accounting firms do not switch into advisory business, they are dead. Um, I mean by that, um, you know, in the past, an accounting firm, a good accounting firm was able to, to take care of your tax return filing thing uh, in a good way. Now, a good firm is not that anymore. A good firm is the one able to advise the clients um, to almost mentally or psychologically help them dealing with some of their issues by giving the right advice. So to me, and, and, and I believe the trend and in the statistics, you, you see that advisory work has been increasing the last few years. But I would expect almost an exponential curve mm. uh, in our business because this is really key. And we have seen the last few months that with all the governments implementing some changes, um, the, the clients of our accounting firms were totally lost thinking, okay, how are we supposed to do, uh, how, how, do we, how do we make it happen? So they, they really um, looked at their accountants like if they were God and goodness, you know, and, 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 and they really expect this advisory. So this is to me the major, the very major uh, thing that will happen. And with that in mind, I wouldn't be surprised if accounting firms start recruiting maybe people with different profiles, um, maybe not only CPAs, but other sort of people who can give advice. Mm -hmm. And it could even be uh, marketing, it could, it could be uh, other things. But I wouldn't be surprised if the, 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 the sort of profiles we meet in accounting firms would also change so that the advisory business is a comprehensive uh, service business. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And Mark, you mentioned earlier that accountancy is recession proof, but there are some tough times coming up for accounting firms, surely. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, on, on some of the advisory, the, the clients will pull back a little bit and some of the advisor, they'll advance forward. You know, the, the opportunities now, and we had talked about this quite a bit at AICPA, we were doing weekly town halls with our members. And we said, you know, we were fully engulfed in that governmental change support that Thierry talked about that's happening globally. But then at some point, trying to talk to the firms about getting their clients to shift differently. There are still markets that aren't open yet. There are some markets that have opened, but at a, 
at a part-time basis. And so how do we help our clients transform their business? And the more we know in a particular industry vertical, the more that we can help. And uh, even if it's not advisory, some of the other elements that we've seen, client accounting services, we've talked about this a lot. You know, you see those that are in the cloud with client accounting services that have built a business model of looking at an industry niche and being able to do it. They had clients that for the last couple of years have really tried to push their clients toward being in the cloud and ha making everything virtual when it comes to all their financial information. And those clients that balked at that were calling their firm their phones were ringing off the hook with clients saying, get me to the cloud right now. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to continue to transform. And even for those organizations, those clients that have internal accounting support today, that will continue to transform into becoming more automated and more outsourced inside of what they do. So even though we want to say, Rob, that yes, the recession will suffer in some of the traditional lines that we do today, these other opportunities are still going to continue to offset where that is. And I do think while it won't be the exponential growth that we've seen in the last five years, there'll still be some element of growth even in that recessionary time. Yeah, sure, that does make sense. And Rich, there's some concern that 2021 might be even tougher than 2020. What do you feel coming up for the accounting profession over the next year or so? Well, I think, um, you know, accountants need to uh, focus on not just being compliance experts or experts in accounting and to become business people. Uh, business people first who have an accounting expertise that they can leverage to help ma uh, manage risk and create efficiency. Mm. And whether that's uh, using technology or process or people, uh, or implementing uh, different types of talent, as Thierry mentioned. Uh, I think all of those are going to be elements of where we go from here. And I think um, that it's important for accountants to be thinking about uh, what value they can bring to an organization, uh, because that is where they will be uh, best utilized, if you will, in terms of uh, uh, continuing their business and uh, reinventing themselves, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I think it's almost impossible to think that, um, you know, there isn't going to need to be an elevated expertise when it comes to IT and technology and everything that we do, uh, because companies are going to operate in that space, whether it's the cloud or using other software uh, programs that will replace what we currently do today from a compliance standpoint. The, the hours that accountants spend uh, every day doing certain tasks will be gone uh, in, in the next 12 to 24 months in many ways. And so in order to deploy those hours in a different way, they have to think about what will they spend their time doing. Uh, it won't be filling out tax returns and uh, putting in numbers in a box and so forth. We'll, have well a push of a button does that now, Rich, doesn't it really? Exactly. Yeah, there'll be an app, uh, you know, and it'll scan your face and everything you need to about your life is now on the web. And so, uh, but, you know, the, uh, the point will be, how do you take that information? How do you make it valuable for your client mm -hmm. so that they use it to be better, uh, to improve, to increase their business, to create relationships? And so I think that's where um, accountants should spend their time. Uh, and as Mark mentioned, it's going to just uh, reposition where that revenue stream is coming from uh, and what's driving it as opposed to what it used to be in the past. Yeah, thank you. And I've asked your peers, uh, the leaders in global accounting networks and associations, this very question around what's coming up for accountants. And they say that the firms that will do growth and recovery best are the ones that invest in two things. One is in people and the other is in technology. So you are echoing those thoughts. So uh, as we draw it to a close, uh, I'm gonna turn you into a genie in a bottle. I can't turn you into Donald Trump or Boris Johnson or anything else and give you global power. But uh, if I granted you one wish or you had a magic wand, is there a mark? We'll start with you on this one. Anything you'd change about the world generally or your role or accounting firms or the profession, what might that be? Uh, in today's environment, I think ultimately for me, the magic wand would be about diversity and inclusion. 
Okay. More than anything. And that on a global scale, uh, we. That sounds absolutely. personal as well. Yeah. It's a real passion of yours. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, we just need to do better. Yeah. Do you want to unpack that a little bit? There's, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now that shows that we haven't got that right, have we? There is. No, we don't. Uh, you know, I hope that my 21-year-old son's generation uh, will get it figured out. I hope we don't ruin everything before he has the opportunity to get there. Mm. Um, but, you know, in the U.S. specifically, uh, when we talk about uh, race, uh, you know, we are not, uh, uh, as a profession, we are not keeping up with uh, society or our communities need to do a better job of the pipeline, need to do a better job of uh, hiring, promotability, and understanding what inclusion means. And it is not having an unconscious bias training and check a box like we're doing, you know, cybersecurity training or, or sexual harassment. It is having very r real conversations. We used to start meetings by saying, if we're gonna have a real conversation, you need to suspend your right to be offended because I need to ask questions that I don't know my own ignorance and we need to get real about the conversation. And that's something that, you know, we at Alineal and I know there's a lot of other firms out there uh, around the globe that are as passionate as, as we are about diversity. Yeah, that's a great point. And of course that's just you in America because in the UK we've got race and gender and everything all sorted. I mean, that's just, <laughs> no. And if only we could do that with a magic wand, Mark, wouldn't that be something? Uh... Everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Thierry, what about you? If we made you a genie in a bottle or gave you a magic wand, what would you change about stuff right now? Well, I, I will never be Harry Potter, but um, <laughs> I, I would say that... Let me make um, you Harry Potter for just a few seconds. <laughs> what would you well, I have the glasses. Um, well, I... I think it, it has been, as I said, it has been amazing uh, for me to see um, the entrepreneurship of many people, to see their capacity to change overnight and to embrace the change, um, which was unexpected. And after a few years of good economical situation, people tend to take everything for granted sometimes and, and tend to become a little bit passive. And when I have seen what people were able to do when they had no other choice than embracing that change, I'm really hoping that in the future, they will not wait for such a tragedy to uh, be creative um, and that we don't need to, to have disruptive events uh, to create this kind of creativity. I, I really wish people would think out of the box more often and not wait that they are forced to do so. Of course, it's the challenge also uh, that, that make it possible. But I, I, I really hope, um, if I could use my magic wand, um, that, that um, people would, would keep the same speed in embracing the change and dealing with it. That would be great. Yeah. And accountants have not traditionally dealt well with change as a race, but uh, they have shown a certain mental resilience in coping with what's gone on because they've been described as, as wearing capes and superheroes because they stand in the gap between business and, and government and everything else that's going on. And they are the trusted advisor. So, um, yeah, Rich, I'm, I'm giving you a magic wand now or giving you a genie in the bottle with warm wish. So what would you bring about? Well, you, you did say it was magic. So yeah. um, necessarily have <laughs> it would, to be, it would be totally based in reality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would eliminate all disease. Uh, okay. We're dealing with COVID-19 and uh, every <coughs> other strain of, uh, uh, bird flu and MERS and SARS and I mean there's going to be something that comes next after yeah. this one. and yeah. uh, you know world health uh, would be uh, truly I think uh, uh, influential on what we could accomplish as uh, uh, you know as a, an entire globe um, you know imagine if you didn't have to deal with those types of things and the other thing I would make uh, uh, possible is uh, teleportation because uh, uh, I don't like spending 18 hours on a plane. You told me you love the travel stuff earlier. So. I, I, I do, but there is a limit. So uh, I like to be in the place uh, quickly, too. So. Yeah. 
But I guess the overall sentiment here is it shouldn't take a crisis to bring about some of the good change that we see right now. But uh, there are some opportunities to make changes and it's brought a lot of things to the front of mind uh, that we're dealing with. So, uh, gentlemen, as we draw to a close, I'm going to ask you for some closing remarks by way of what would you say to the leaders watching and listening here to help them cope with what's coming up? What advice would you give to them? Maybe some words of inspiration or a little bit of wisdom or a quote or something that has served you. So uh, just be thinking about that as I wrap up, because we are in tough times. The accountants have a wonderful opportunity here to serve the world and make a real difference. And you are the leaders of those leaders. So um, Mark, let me start with you. Uh, some words of uh, wisdom uh, and advice and support and encouragement for the leaders out there. What would you say to them right now? Never let a good crisis go to waste. You know, it's uh, 2020 is the new 2025. We've had the ability not to change, but to actually transform our practices. And I think that that becomes really the critical factor. So how we can redo our business model and how our team shows up to the office every day, how we redo our business model in technology, how we redo our business model in the types of services that we provide, I think are absolutely essential. And so now's the time, let's take advantage of this and let's really transform to make sure that we're right. We've been talking transformation for five plus years. It is on our doorstep take advantage of it. Yeah. And Rich, if we're not going to change now, when are we going to change? This is the time, isn't it? That's right. And, and I would say that, uh, you know, success is 90% in your mind and 10% in execution. And so you always have to remain positive. You can't let uh, the negativity, uh, you know, drag you down. You have to focus on the things that will uh, allow you to succeed, take them one step at a time, don't get discouraged, and uh, you will see success. Um, it's when you think you can't do something that you fulfill that prophecy. And yeah. so I think you just got to know you can do it. And, uh, you know, don't get overwhelmed with all of the things that uh, are hitting you at the same time. Focus on what you can control, and then just go one step at a time towards your goal. I'm sure you could write a book about that stuff, Rich. I can see it in you all waiting to come out. Uh, what's for sure is that we're not looking at a reboot here, but a reset. And by that, I mean that this is what's happening now is not something where you turn your computer off, you turn it back on and everything looks the same as it was. This is a reset. So when we switch back on, uh, and you were hinting this earlier, Thierry, things are not going to be the same. It is going to be a new kind of normal. So Thierry, to finish, what advice or words of encouragement would you give to the leaders watching as we, we come into a new world? I, I will echo what Rich said. Um, I, I would just say trust the future because it's full of opportunities and there is no reason to have fears um, that, that wouldn't be productive. Um, but trust the future and be positive is, is certainly one of the best support we, we, can, we can have, we can keep to embrace whatever we will need to face. Yeah. Even if we still have uh, sickness and, and, and things like, like we had, which we will, um, let's, let's look at it. There is something behind which isn't a great opportunity anyway. Yeah. I think it was Woody Allen that said, uh, you, should, you should enjoy the future because it's where you're going to spend most of your time. So, <laughs> that is. Gentlemen, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Well, it's been great to have you with us today. We've had uh, three very influential guests that uh, are going to go away and help change the world and serve their accounting members uh, as they, in turn, stand in the gap and serve the businesses as we look at a time of growth and recovery. And uh, not just change businesses, but as we've hinted here, changed minds, uh, changed attitudes, uh, a new future where we care a little bit more and uh, things count for a little bit more so gentlemen thank you so much for your time today thank you for your inspiration and your insights i'm going to stop the recording and uh, we will all be good we'll have that one in the bag